Welcome back to another BJB tutorial video. Recently, many customers have been asking if it's possible to cast BJB materials into 3D printed molds. The short answer is yes, it's possible. And many of our customers have successfully used this method. But there are many things to know and understand before jumping into making 3D printed molds. So we decided to make a video to show how to work with unique aspects of this process. As always, our goal at BJB is to take the mystery out of materials, so let's get started. If you compare 3D printed molds to typical silicone molds used in casting polyurethanes into, you'll need to consider the shape and flexibility of the cast material. Silicone molds are more forgiving in that you can cast rigid parts with undercuts and simply flex the mold away from the cured part. With 3D printed molds, you can only get away with the undercuts if the cast material is extremely flexible and you're able to apply mold release in those areas. And that's another difference between the two mold materials. Silicone is inherently non-stick and self-releases cast parts, whereas cast urethanes will want to stick to the plastics commonly used in 3D printers, requiring us to apply mold release every time we cast the part. So think about this before you decide to make a 3D printed mold and choose the appropriate method for the part. First, we needed to find a part design that would show the process well, but also be practical to use in the real world once we're finished. So I'm really excited to show you the project we chose to display the process. This combines my personal passion for 3D printing, mold making and casting, and longtime hobby. The exploding popularity of radio controlled multicopters has taken on a whole new level with DIYers, hobbyists, engineers, and techie tinkers like myself. And a lot of this growth has been spurred by consumer 3D printers and the ability to customize parts. So what better way to show the process than build a quadcopter using our 3D printer and BJB's versatile casting materials? A while back, I made some landing pads on an aerobatic quadcopter I built from BJB Flex Foam. They were great as shock absorbers and gave me a little extra ground clearance. They also helped with visual orientation while in the air doing wild aerobatics. I quickly realized that they could also be slightly modified to help protect the motors in the event of a crash. And let's face it, if you're practicing aerobatic moves, you're going to crash. At that point, I decided to build a new quadcopter from scratch utilizing this concept. I drafted up a solid model in Tinkercad to use as a pattern to make my mold. The mold would be split into four separate interconnecting pieces. Three pieces make up the main body of the mold using transitions of geometry as split lines to eliminate any undercuts. And a fourth piece as a slide out to mold the pocket where we insert the end of the quad's arms. We printed this mold on our Airwolf 3D Axiom FDM printer using ABS plastic from Matter Hackers. The parts printed beautifully and require only minor cleanup to fit together. The arms of the quad utilizes 5-8 spruce sticks commonly found at many hardware stores. These sticks are strong, lightweight, low cost, and easy to use. The motors mount the 3D printed plates clamped securely to the wood arms. The center frame is simply 3D printed plates with slots, holes, and channels to mount all of our electronics and motor arms to. All these files will be available for download on Thingiverse with links in the video description along with build photos and info to print your own if you choose. So now that we have our 3D printed mold, we'll go through the process of preparing it to cast BJB's polyurethane flexible foam into it. The first thing we need to consider is what surface finish we wish to achieve on our mold and the parts. The molds have visible build lines and depending on your application, you may need to do some finish work to address this. A very popular method of smoothing ABS parts is to perform an acetone vapor polish. I have an extra mold piece here in which I did this process to show you. The surfaces of the mold look very nice and shiny and smooth, but notice it also destroy the definition of any edges I'll need for a properly fitting mold flange. So this method won't work for me, at least I'll have a really nice soap dish. You could also apply an epoxy sealer like BJB's TC1614 to seal and finish the mold surface. Hand sanding is another finishing method to eliminate the build lines. With a fair amount of time and labor, you can achieve a very nice surface in which to replicate in your parts. You also have a much easier time in releasing parts from a smooth surface. Having said all that, we're actually going to use a surface as is because the finished aesthetics don't require it. I'll walk you through how to properly apply mold release and achieve great results. On any rigid mold, I typically recommend to first apply a mold release wax to help seal the tool as well as aid in part release. 
be sure to apply wax to all mold surfaces and flange areas to avoid material sticking to them. We'll add an additional mold release in a later step. Take your time in getting wax applied on these mold pieces. After the wax is allowed to haze and dry for a few minutes, we buff it off just like waxing a car using a clean, dry cloth. You'll want to repeat this process and apply two to three coats of wax at a minimum. An alternative to the paste wax is BJB's Challenge 95 Liquid Wax. You might choose this instead of paste wax if you have hard to reach details or geometry in the mold. Being a liquid, it's fast and easy to apply compared to paste wax. Apply two to three coats with time to dry in between. Either wax you decide to use, sealing the tool first will save a lot of headaches down the road. As I mentioned earlier, we'll apply an additional mold release to ensure parts come out of the mold easier. E302 Rocket Release is a non-silicone containing mold release that we like to use in addition to wax for releasing polyurethane foam. As mentioned in our Guide to Polyurethane Foam video, we do not recommend using anything silicone based or you may end up with surface defects in your cast foam parts. Once we had cast a few foam parts out of this 3D printed mold, we realized that the texture of the mold surface was causing parts to stick more than a smooth surface would. So we went to an old trick of the trade by dusting some baby powder in the mold after applying the rocket release, tapping the powder around inside of the mold and shaking out any excess. This did the trick and gave great results. It's time to mix up our two-part flex foam and cast into the mold. 30 grams of BJB's TC277 is mixed with orange pigment. If you've watched our video guide to polyurethane foams, you'll know you need to work quickly and get the mixture into the mold before it starts to react. Having hinges on our mold really helps speed up the process, getting the mold closed and ready for clamps. After a minute or so, we start to see the foam is expanded and a small amount vents out of the tool. This indicates that the cavity is filled and we're building some back pressure in the tool. This will help form consistent cell structure and uniform skin surface. 20 to 25 minutes later, we're ready to demold the part. Remove the overfill at the vent and begin to open the mold lid. The bottom lid requires some wedges to help pry open the mold flange. Once the lid is open, we can push around the edges to start loosening the foam from the mold. Our mold insert helps in getting the foam pad extracted the rest of the way. Continue to squeeze the foam around the insert and slide it out using the molded hand grip. A little cleanup of the part to remove flashing is all you need before it's ready for our quad. And casting foam pads in a different color is easy by substituting a different pigment color. So now that we've cast several pads, we can start to assemble our quadcopter. Check out the part 2 video to see the quadcopter assembled and fly. Thanks for watching.